Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Podcast. I'm Lex and this is Libby. On this week's podcast, we're going to be discussing how much it actually costs to make a game and how to actually get started. Mm -hmm. So Libby, what do you think? What do you think about the cost of a game? Do you think it's expensive? Do you think it's cheap? Do you think you can do it on a shoestring budget? I suspect for the majority of what people are aiming for, it's going to be very expensive. But there are probably cheaper options if you know what you're looking for. That's just it. Making a game can cost you nothing but your time or the budget of a small country. Yes. So that it's quite a big range. Yeah, quite that's a, quite a, a big, big range. Scary range. Now, the most important aspect of making a game is, of course, balancing your budget with what you're looking to achieve. So shall we take a look and see where all that money can be spent? See where your pennies can be lost? Let's have a look, shall we? Let's have a look. I can think Enlighten of nothing me. I'd rather do. So... First of all, yes. what do you think the biggest expenditure is? The big ex biggest expenditure? Probably marketing, surely. It's you. It's you. It's your team. Your team can cost you a small fortune, all depending on skill, their expectations, okay. where you've poached them from. But if it's just me and I'm doing it in my free time, I'm not costing me anything. Well, it's costing no. my time. It's costing you time and obviously you've got to afford to live. Yes. So that's where things can get a little bit scary. Yes. So you might have okay. to do other work on the yeah. side, etc. So... Your team. The more people working on the project, the more it's going to cost you. Now, if this is not a project that's being worked on in people's spare time, then people do still need to earn a living, and this can soon add up. I would imagine so. Yeah, it can get quite substantial. I mean, if you think the average person in the UK wants what? 30 grand a year? Probably these days, yeah. You've got a team of 10, 10 times three. It's a lot of money. And then actually you're forgetting about all the taxes, the pension and all that sort of thing well, as well. That is it's not a just a straight day, yeah, 30 it's, grand, is it? No, not at all. It's anything but. And then you've got to get them computers. You've got to yeah, get them. You yeah. need the equipment, training. And they like to eat and drink and stuff. And, you don't have to uh, pay for that. Well, you don't have to, but you know, being a good employer, we'd want to do such things. Oh, thing. yes. We'd want to do such things. So, on a good note, though. Yes. And I'm sure this is something you're going to bring up later on. The actual game engine itself. Mm-hmm. Tends not to charge. Yes, Completely free. That is correct. So if you go with something like Godot, which I would recommend, or Unity for whatever reason, or maybe Unreal, you know, they all don't charge anything. Now, Godot... Not it. immediately. This is what I was going to say. Godot, that's it. You never pay anything. Yeah. So thank you for that, lads. Great system. Love using it. Unity and Unreal, they tend to be completely free until you start making yep. money, which I think is fair, really. It is. I... Was going to bring that up, but now I don't need to. So oh, why don't you bring it up again? You know, we can I relive might. this amazing fact. <laughs> yeah. Be nice. No, it's. I think it is completely fair. You know, you've used their engine in a lot of cases, possibly used assets from them as well. Mm. Mm. So, absolutely, a percentage is fair. I think. What does cost you money though? The game engine might be free. It's the software you use. You know, your photoshops, your. Myers, your what is it? What is it called now? Autodesk, your three D Max. That's it. Three D S Max. That's the one. I never used it myself, but it's big popular. I like to use Blender. To be fair, it's nice. It's free for a little scrimper like me. It's all good. It's all good. We like that. But your software licenses can certainly add up, and they can get a bit, a little bit scary in price. So you've got to be careful of all of that. Now, these are all the key factors to pricing your game budget. But when you get a value, which you will, you'll have a value in your head, like what you mm -hmm. were saying earlier about the wages. Yeah. You're going to want to add at least 20% on because there's all these extra scary costs which add up, which get built in. You don't even see coming. There's always hidden expenditure, hidden taxes, hidden rates. The rainy days where things just don't go to plan. So add 20%, at least 20% extra to your at budget. At least 20%. At least. Honestly, I'd double it if I were you, but that gets scary then. <laughs> well, you know how my last venture went. That, yes, um, yes, I do. <laughs> we'll do it for 20 grand. Do it for 20 grand. It was... Um, Substantially more. Well, just shy a quarter of a million, I think. So, uh, yeah, a little, a little bit, a little, little bit, bit over that. budget. Yeah. But that was that was down to me and poor planning. So, once again, don't make my mistakes. Now, let's just have a look at what we've got here. Now, these are all the key features, key factors of pricing your game. <coughs> Keep your game into a good budget, a budget which you're going to know. Add your 20%, up to 100% extra. And then your game will hopefully work, hopefully go to plan. Hopefully. Hopefully, but I feel like there is more coming. But let's look at the opposite side of the spectrum. You mentioned earlier, free if you're doing it in your time, right? Yeah. You know a game that did that really well? Stardew Valley. Now, the downside of doing things for free and doing mm -hmm. things on your own is they take forever to do. They do indeed. I think he spent seven years making Stardew Valley. But it's paid off for him. Well, it was a true labour of love. It was. You know, 
The dev, and I've got his name written down here, Eric Barone, I hope I said that right, spent four and a half years, not seven, making every aspect of the game himself. He did the lot. He did the music, the video, the gameplay, the story. He did everything. That's impressive. It really, really is. And I'm yet to meet someone that doesn't like Stardew Valley. I've never played it. I haven't either. <laughs> wow. So we're here talking about it, but we've never played it. Never played but it. But that's but... a testament to it, isn't it? Yeah. We both know how we good both it is. We both know how good it is. And we both know how it looks, how it plays. I know a lot of people that have played it and consistently tell me that I need to actually. Same. Same. No, it is a good game. And one day, I'm one sure day, when we've yeah. got free time, yeah. <laughs> free time, what's that? But the amazing thing about Eric here is Eric was able to keep costs low by doing everything himself and living with his parents and partner. Now, this is a great way to keep costs low, but it did take him over four and a half years at around 60 hours a week to finish That's the game. That's a lot. It's a lot of hard work. This is another thing that when you're making a game, if you can love it, it's, it's no work. longer work, is it? If you enjoy doing it. What is it they say? If you enjoy what you're doing, you never work a day in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Such a cheesy saying. But it's true. It's true, though. Isn't it is it? true. You've, you're really lucky in life if you can enjoy what you do every yeah. day. You know, that, that really is the goal, really. So, so it's not a problem to create your game by yourself with little to no funding. Just be prepared. It's going to take a while. Yes. Although, actually, four and a half years for a solo developer, for a game that's like Stardew Valley that's come out... I mean, that doesn't actually sound like that long a time, really. It's when you think of some games that have come out in around actually the same time, where they've had massive companies working yeah. on them. Yeah, I mean, the argument that you could make is, oh, the graphic styles are different, they've gone for 3D graphics. But then I would come back and say, well, did they were they better than Stargy Valley? Yeah. I mean, look at Minecraft. It ain't exactly cutting edge graphics, is it? But my God, the gameplay's there. Yeah. And I really do think, not to go off on a tangent, but I really do think that games are getting so lost in high fidelity graphics now that they're kind of forgetting to make a good game. Have you seen that quadruple A game that came out recently? I think it's called Skull and Bones. It's a pirate game. I have not seen that it one. It is getting slated. It's well, one of Ubisoft's finest. One I was going to mention on that front is Cyberpunk. Well, they fixed it, to be fair. They did. Cyberpunk's all right now. But what, it took them a year, 18 months after release for them to fix it? Mm. I mean, that got slated no end when it came out because it just wasn't finished. No, but... It's credit to the lads, much like with No Man's Sky, they went silent, they got their heads down, and they put it right. They did. And I mean, No Man's Sky, it's a, it's a space game, if you've never played it, it's, an, it's amazing now. It was complete trash when it came out. I do wonder what happened there, I don't think we'll ever really know the truth. They blame it on the publishers and such, mm. which maybe they're right, but they got their head down, they worked hard, and now that game is phenomenal. Really, really good. I recommend it. But anyway, this, this quadruple A game. Yes. It's a pirate game. Pirate game. It is getting slated left, right, and centre. That's a shame. I like pirates. Well, the, of course, of course. Who doesn't, like, Who doesn't pirates? like pirates? But 10 years ago, there was an Assassin's Creed game, which was set on the, on the high seas with pirates mm -hmm. as well. So much better than this game that came out over a decade later. It's like, what? Are they, yeah. They've got the cheek to charge $70 for this game. 70 Yeah, because it's a quadruple A game, not a triple A game, quadruple A. It is not going down well. Oh dear. It is not going down well. And um, I don't know, maybe Ubisoft will put it right, but it is Ubisoft. They're not known for, are they? No, not really. No. So. But moving on. Moving on. <laughs> so how much does it actually cost to make a game? I don't know. It can be anything from nothing to a lot. It seems in reality, having some financial backing gives you the opportunity to work on the game full-time stress-free or allow you to hire staff to speed it up, but it is not essential. And obviously, when you're getting financial backing, unless it's like in the form of a loan, which you're personally responsible for, you're going to be beholden to someone. Yeah. And then you may end up like... No Man's Sky, getting pushed around, knocked about, yeah. and come out with a game which wasn't what you originally envisioned. So you've got to weigh it up against each other and really, really plan. So what I want your takeaway from this segment to be, don't let finances put you off making a game. You can do it without spending a penny if that's what you want to do, and maybe that is the right option for you. There's always the um, fundraising options, which we've yep. spoken about in previous podcasts. If people want to go down that route, they can do. I wouldn't personally put all your eggs in that basket just on the off chance it's hard work it's hard work and it's become so hyper competitive now yeah. i just it's not as reliable as it once was people have been too burnt by it but it can be done on a shoestring budget as our good friend eric has proven with stardew valley absolutely so that's how much to make a game how much does it cost don't know <laughs> money not money very vague answer isn't it really well, th there really isn't an answer to it it's, no. it's an awkward question but money shouldn't be the thing which stops you from doing it I mean, in the UK, for example, there are numerous games fund and startup funds you can get yeah. where they will give you grant money to make your game. And that can really help get you a long way. So don't let money be the stopping factor. 
Follow your passion. Follow your passion. <laughs> so there you go. I've given a nice vague answer. Let's say somebody says, you know what? I'm inspired by that. That complete <laughs> lack of an answer. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go okay. there and I'm going to get that game going. But they've got no experience. No experience. No Not experience. a clue. But None. as clueless as I am. How do you get started, Libby? How do you get started making a well, game? First thing, obviously, you briefly mentioned engines. Development engines, what you're going to use. First thing you're going to do is pick an engine. Pick an engine. Pick so an engine. We've picked Godot or Unreal. I just love how you just sideswipe, you know, you yeah, completely. Yeah, as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So obviously they are the three main, main engines. You really don't like the, Unity. <laughs> I, I haven't said anything of the sort. If you want to use Unity, then you crack on and use Unity. And but yes, obviously they all have their... <clears throat> awful. Absolutely awful. So they all have their pros and cons, obviously. Some more cons than pros, but carry on. And... With Unity and Unreal, they will take a percentage when your game starts making money. Perfectly fair and reasonable, Which is perfectly fair and reasonable. But you're also going to want to look at the programming options on each of these as well. You're going to want to think about assets. When, hang on, go back to this. When you say programming, what do you mean? Do you mean the languages you use or do you mean things like Unreal's blueprint system? What, what do you mean? Um, so the blueprint system. Uh, have you seen blueprints? Sorry, I'm going off on tangent. Have you seen blueprints? I have not, personally. It's really good. Like, it, it sounds like a, you know, plug and play, click and clack kind of thing. Oh, it can't be that good. No, it's really good. Games okay. can and have been made in just blueprints. And this has got to be... I mean, unreal. I know it's one of the most popular programming options. It's getting there. I think Unity's still at the top for some reason. I know Godot is making grounds. Godot is making grounds. However, they did remove their... Visual, yeah, I don't know why they did that. I've personally never used it. I don't know anybody that has, visual scripting, but... it's called, isn't it? Yeah, that's what it yeah. was called. Yeah, it's okay, it's kind of like a Bobby's version of Blueprint. Well, maybe that's why, maybe they're maybe. ashamed. Ah, oh, Blueprints is killers, <laughs> but no, Godot, obviously, fanboy, love it lots. Um, if I was to work for somebody, big yeah. company, I would without a doubt pick Unreal now. Yeah, it's just kick ass. I mean, I was gonna say, if you are looking at going into the industry for a big employer rather than remaining an indie developer, yeah. you do want to be looking at Unity and Unreal. Yeah. Because at, they're at going to give you the skill sets as well that mm. are desired within the industry. Godot is still relatively niche. And while it is amazing and I'll <laughs> sing its process forever, it's not quite there and it's certainly not an industry standard at the moment. No. So unfortunately you're going to want something like Unity or better yet, Unreal. Yeah. I'm tangent also, aside. <laughs> tangent aside. But I'll also mention briefly about assets as well because while you can make your own if you wanted to i wouldn't recommend it when you're starting out no, because touching. yeah drawing and modeling it's a whole different skill set so use other people's assets that you have the rights to use Very obviously important. do not just steal people's assets but yeah i mean if you want to learn it alongside fantastic go for it why not but i wouldn't recommend it it's a lot to do in the early stages. You should probably mention the asset stores at this point, shouldn't you? Probably. So all three have got them. All th does Godot have them? Absolutely. It's, I did it's not realise that actually. If I it's it's very good. It's got at least six things in it now. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, <laughs> Godot's asset store is more script modules and things. It's mm. it's wonderful, but uh, yeah, if you if you know you're using something like Godot, you probably want to go to something like Kenny. Plug to you, Kenny. Just type in Kenny's assets; it'll pop up. He's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's, he's basically the god of free assets for games. Fair he's enough. Phenomenal. So there you are. There you go. Free plug there, Kenny. But, but I'd recommend him if you're on Godot. But, yeah, um, and Unity and Unreal obviously have their own asset stores that you can purchase from as well. Both with very nice assets. Both with very nice assets. Now, let's assume that you've picked your engine, Lex. I've picked my engine, Libby. Have you picked Godot, Lex? <laughs> Am I allowed to pick Godot? It doesn't matter I've at this point. I've picked Godot, Libby. I've picked Godot. <laughs> What you're going to do next is you're going to learn your engine, obviously. Okay. And to do this, the best way is probably watching tutorials on YouTube. Now, obviously, you have started your own tutorial for Godot, haven't you, I've, I've done one or two, yes. <laughs> so I've if you're interested in using Godot, by all means. <laughs> yeah, I've got my FPS series Godot uh, tutorial series up at the moment. It's three parts up currently, more coming. Yeah. It's the bare bones essentials that will get you there. I've got a tower defense one coming soon and a space fighter sim one coming as well. But I don't Very know exciting. when because that one is a bit more complex. So 
I need to break yeah, that Well, we're, we're going for beginner ones here. Oh, okay. Beginner. Forget I said anything then. Um, what I would say, obviously, Lex has his own tutorials at, at the moment, but don't just watch one person's. Watch several because everyone's going to have their own yeah. little quirks and way they do things. And definitely, you know, find what works for you. So watch two, three different people, I would say. And, you know, you go along with them. People learn in different ways. I can't cope with just listening to stuff. No, you got to I have do. to do it as well. Mm. Otherwise, it just does not go in. No, absolutely. So do what's good for you in that sense. And, yeah, that's going to be probably quite boring and tedious. It can be, but it can also be fun as well. It I mean, can be. all these modern day engines... As you're programming, you can, you know, run the game and see where you're up to. It's really nice to be able to get immediate feedback, immediate response and mm -hmm. play about what you've done already. It's really great for testing as you go kind of thing. So, yeah, it's quite fortunate modern day development. Yes. Well, once you've watched all your tutorials and learned the basics, you're going to start making replica games. Mm. Really simple ones mm. like Pong. You remember Pong? I do remember Pong. Yeah, it's a good You old game. enough the original game, Max? What's that got to do with anything? <laughs> so, yes, replicate simple games like Pong. Flappy Bird is another one. You love Flappy Bird, do you? Don't love you? Flappy Bird. You do. You've had a lot of time, a <laughs> lot, of, lot of enjoyment. Well, yeah, we're not Flappy going Bird. into that now. Not today. Okay. <laughs> Super Mario is a good one. Little platform yes. like that. So, yeah, replicate a few of these simple games. Don't worry about making them look pretty. Give yourself quite short time scales for these because you are literally just trying to get to grips with Ooh, spend a weekend on yeah. kind of thing. yeah um getting to grips with the mechanics of it and making it work that's all you're trying to do at this point mm. you're not worried about how it looks so kind of like taking on new staff you're just spending a bit of time getting it to work getting them to work and then you can sure no okay. <laughs> different topic for a different day yes <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so you've completely thrown my train of thought there, haven't you? We were talking about training and learning the tools. Yes. Spending a little bit, little bit of time on them. Learning the tools. So, yeah, you're not going to worry about how it looks. And it also giving yourself deadlines as well, I think, is actually really important mm -hmm. within game development. Kind of like the game jams, like Luden Dare, where people get a set yeah. time period of time to make I games. mean, that is something that is worth doing if you are into that kind of thing mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. There are lots of game jams around. Lots of them. Just go on Google. There are plenty. There is always one going on. But if you don't want to do that and you don't want to go into the competitive side of it and things as well, just do it yourself. And when you're doing these replicas, I would recommend adding a little twist. Adding a little twist? Just a little twist. Well, like Super Mario, but he can fly. Yeah, why not? Flappy Bird with guns. Well, to be fair, it worked for Powerball, didn't it? <laughs> well, exactly. Pokemon with guns. God, what a great game. Honestly, what a great game. I've not played it. Do you play anything? Everything you talk about, you're like, I've not played it. I haven't played anything. As aside from our, like, little reviews, I haven't really been playing much recently. Actually, no, that's a lie. I recently started playing Borderlands Tiny Tina's Wonderland. You know, I've never played a Borderlands game. See, you're missing out. I love them. Wow. <laughs> They're great. Well, there we go. But that's not what we're talking about here. No, no. No, so... You've done your replicas. You've done those little games. You're now going to start doing your own game. But it's going to be a short one still. So it's not going to be this monumental idea that you've had in your mind for months and weeks. So what and you're years. saying is don't start with an MMO out the gate. Yeah, don't do that. Mm. That's a bit much. Nice Kickstarter MMO. Let's get going. I'm sure we'll get somewhere with it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah, do that. it for 20 quid. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. That's gone really well in the past, hasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So well. You know, I'd love to know. I'm going off one again. I'd love to know how many Kickstarter MMOs were announced and how many actually came to be finished. fruition. Yeah. I'd love to know. I'd we'll really have to look it. into that. I'm not going to do it. You can do it. I might. Well, well, if anybody knows, leave a comment because I'm generally curious, but I ain't going to do the research. I'll consider doing the research. Maybe. I probably won't. <laughs> but anyway. MMOs aside. MMOs aside. Back to our simple little flappy bird platformer with guns. No, we're moving on from that. Oh, oh sorry. We're moving oh, on from that. We're moving in the past. Yeah. No, what I'm saying is you don't go for your massive game. You're going to go for a small game. So still small, but you're going to give yourself a couple of months for this one. Obviously, think about your own time scales because if you have a full-time job, a family, you're not going to have as much time to work on it as you would perhaps if it was just... So, so what you're saying is don't neglect the family. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. Mm. 
no, don't don't neglect your family mm, mm. and don't just jack in your job because this one's definitely not going to make you money either. This is all still just learning the techniques, learning the mechanics, learning the engine to get you where you need to be. So how long are we going to spend doing this then? 20 years? 30 years? <laughs> Retirement we'll be able to make again? <laughs> well, I would say... It sounds like we've made everything under the sun apart from the game we want to make so far. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> Basically. Because... If you're just going to jump straight in to try and make your game, you're going to end up wasting so much time learning everything and you're going to end up going back over what you've already done because you've realised that actually what you did at the beginning is no good because you didn't know what you were doing. So you're going to learn it properly first and you're going to do your two-month mm. game. Mm. And in this one, rather than just looking at the mechanics, you're going to give it some more levels. You're going to give it some more interesting features and you're going to Think about the graphics and polish them a little bit. Flappy Bird with guns and bombs. Yeah. I wouldn't play that. With multiple trash, levels. Actually. Yeah. I don't but like it's that. still, it's just a little game. What about Flappy Bird with guns, bombs, different levels, and a different unique control system, a way of controlling it? I know what you're getting at here, and we're not it, talking can, about it. Okay. It's not happening, not okay. today. It is what you're thinking. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, my Lord. Okay, right. Yeah, you're going to make your game. <laughs> With its unique control system. Cool. So, we've made our game. Yeah. It's unique. We've been practicing forever and a day, it seems like. It does. Kids have gone through college and university. They're at home now. No, you're, you're doing all this in like six months. Oh, all right. All of it in six months. The whole step-by-step -step program. Okay. And like I said, this is really basic. Really basic. Really basic. Really basic. <laughs> but once you've done that and you've completed it, you've finished it, and you think, actually, it looks quite good, you know, if you want, you can publish it to Steam or whatever, and That's people can play it. Yeah, why not? That's kind of you. But it's, it's good if you're looking at going into the industry, because for one, it shows that you can finish mm. what you've started. Yeah, it's amazing which how is many people a start big don't finish. thing, yeah. yes. So many, I mean, you just have to look on Kickstarter for that. The amount of things that go on there and never get finished is ridiculous. There's at least four games that have done that. <laughs> just four. At least four. At least four. I'm sure there's a few more than that. Well, maybe as many as six or seven then. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. But yes, if you're going into the industry, that's going to look really good for a start because you can finish it. And when you then, you know, you've done your small little game, you're going to go on and do that monumental game that you've been imagining for years. Obviously, you're going to start building up a fan base and your supporters and things are going to see that also you can complete a game. And that's going to give them the confidence that you're actually going to finish what yeah. you're working it's funny on now. What you, said. you know, you talk about making simple games, basic yes. mechanics that are good. What about that Buckshot Roulette game that I showed you recently? My God, that's a good game. That is a good game, actually. It's, it's so simple. If you take away its beautiful graphics, it's a ridiculously simple game. So simple. And yet I could play that for hours, yeah. if I'm honest. Yeah, it's a good game. It's a good game. Right. Well, there we go. Yes, that Education is, a, is over. You know how much it's going to cost. Steps. Don't know. You know how to make a game, make rubbish for six months. Yeah. Why don't we have a look at Kickstarter? Okay. And let's see if anybody's taking our amazing advice. They haven't. All right, let me, let's have a look then. What have you got for me on Kickstarter? What am I going to like? What am I not going to like? Okay, you're not going to like this one. I like Ravens. So Ravenswood, Embrace the Fear. I got very excited when I first saw this because I was like, hey, it's got a video. You love a horror um, game. It's got, yeah, I love a horror game. Love a horror Has game. Has it just launched today? Because it's um, yes. not going terribly well so but far. I can tell you now this is not going to make its funding. Why do you say that? That's really harsh if it's only had one day. You will see. Oh, so Ominous. firstly, I'm going to start the video, which starts okay, actually. I don't hate it to begin with, but let's, let's make this full good screen. Good length, 146. Yeah. You'd think it's a good length. You're right. Yeah, you've got the atmospheric music. Is there going to be a jump scare? No, you're fine. You know, I'm like a very nervous person. I love the creepy music. More so because it's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. This, this seems fine. Okay. Yeah. When I first started watching this, I thought, do you know what? Actually, I really like this. Uh, that, I like the look of this. Cobweb's a bit overexposed. But, you know, it's very atmospheric. Yeah. You've definitely got tension building. I'm feeling a little bit anxious, you know what I'm saying? Oh, pianos. They're always scary. 
Yeah, it, it does look, from first impression, really good. I mean, those lights just ain't worth the electric they're using, are they, really? Not in the slightest. Yeah, that music's building. Sound effects building. It, yeah, it sounds like it's going to go somewhere, but doesn't. I was expecting to get jumped then. No, and I'm going to stop it there because it's literally just carries on well, like this. What was that weird... creepy doll that was coming out? Uh, you don't see it again. Oh. Yeah, it literally just oh. carries on with someone walking around a house. Nothing happens. Absolutely nothing. Oh. So what started really well, actually, then doesn't... I mean, I don't know what I'm doing in this game. Is it a find the clues? Is it, you know, do I have to fight creatures or run away from things? Doesn't tell me. I'm just walking around with a flashlight. <laughs> so while it started really well, actually, and I thought I was going to like it, it didn't last. Oh. So we then go down to the story. Maybe they explain it better here. Investing in Ravenswood d development is not just about supporting a game. It's about fueling a passion that has burned within me since childhood. Growing up immersed in horror games and movies, I've always felt a magnetic pull towards that eerie and the mysterious, which I can get on board with because is, I'm very much like that. It, is this person uh, natively English? Yes. Because this seems... Well, I would assume so. They're from Wisconsin. Okay, it just seems very verbose in the way yes, they're speaking. Yes, which does make me question perhaps it's use, they've used AI uh, to write it. it yeah. Yeah, uh, there is something in there. Yeah. Now, with the opportunity to create my own horror masterpiece, I consider it a true blessing, one I wish I had pursued sooner. Now, straight off, this hasn't actually told me anything about the game. The only thing it said is that he's wanted to make a horror game for a while, which yes. all good and well, mate, but I don't care. Yeah. I mean, I love the horror genre. You know that. You do love I the love genre. it. Books, films, TV always find you in a graveyard late at night being a bit of a weirdo yeah. yeah best day ever yeah all right right let's move away from that <laughs> and so then we have an image fine that image is not it's i mean yes it's not a particularly it. great image but you know he's broken up the text which i would recommend but then he basically says the same thing again ravenswood isn't just another game it's the culmination of a lifelong love affair with the genre. As our studio's debut title, it holds a special place in my heart and I'm pouring every ounce of my being into its development. Yeah, this does... So again... This isn't how people talk. No, and again, it has told you nothing about the game. I'm dedicated to crafting an experience that will resonate with players long after... What experience? What's the game about? What do I do in it? We've then got another image and more about the fact that he wants to make the game yeah be not, is there actually anything that tells us about this no game? literally oh hang on this is new this has been added since i last looked at this oh this is exciting because this looks like it well, might tell you actually what, this is yet another reason why you need to make sure your page is ready when you launch it if yes. this has only recently been added you would have written this, this game yeah, off i would have absolutely written this game off because it told me nothing about the game. Literally nothing. There was no mention about what the game actually did. Whereas now, straight away I can see a spine-chilling horror game that will plunge players into a world of relentless terror and gripping suspense. Which I did get the feel of in that intro video. Now, what I'm really hoping is that he tells me a little bit about the game... So I know what it is. That would be nice, wouldn't it? It would. So let's have a look, shall we? Embark on your journey f through the first three haunting locales. So, okay, so it's a haunted area. Police department, secrets linger in the shadows, the forsaken halls of the insane asylum, and a decrepit mansion as well. Okay, so we've got some sort of scenario going on now, at least. Whether you brave the horrors alone or team up with friends. Okay. So I, I now know that it can be co-op. Has it said the objective yet? Have I missed that? Nope. <laughs> okay. No, so we haven't got that yet. Uh, up to four players. Uh, rely on... Our game doesn't just rely on jump scares. Okay. Very atmospheric. Meticulously crafted gameplay mechanics and narrative. What mechanics? 
what am I actually doing in this game? Oh, see, this is all new. This wasn't here when I first looked at this, which is why I had completely written it off. But even so, it's still not told me anything about the game. Not really. I want, you know, is it hidden objects game? Is it, you know, do I have a gun in this game? Tell me something about what I'm doing. Are you reading that? I am. I'm <laughs> skimming it over. I mean, my, my knowledge of the American legal system for companies isn't that great, but I, I don't know why he's claiming that a website and founding a company is going to be that costly. I mean, in the UK, it costs 13 quid to register a limited company and a website's 10 quid a year plus, say, another 10 quid a year for hosting. Yeah, that does seem a lot of money for... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm completely I mean, he off the saying market. Maybe startup it, it costs, costs a fortune in America. Software costs, licenses, equipment purchases, administrative expenses. Uh, I would just be very shocked if he can make a game and do all yeah. that for 10 grand. I mean, I'm going to be honest. While there has been things added since I um, last looked at it, there is definitely more text. There is a lot of boring, doesn't add value text at the beginning. It doesn't grip you straight away. No. What's he put for his risks? I'm curious as to what he's put so for his risks. His risks, unless they have changed, are very generic. Uh, lies in our timeline, which he hasn't mentioned one oh, bit. Oh, I really would be surprised if this wasn't AI written. I'm uh, sorry. But well, we it, aim to surpass too, expectations yeah. over a milestone. We acknowledge the unpredictable nature. While our goal is to avoid delays, we are prepared to adapt. But at no point has he mentioned a timeline. I don't know if this is due to come out this year. It might come out in 10 years' time. I don't know. Look at that under use of AI. There will be no AI-generated content, just mechanics displayed through the use of the Unreal Engine 5. Well, if this is written by a human and not AI, mm. then I think he's gone way too far in a complex direction. I don't think it's terribly relatable. No. But I suspect that that's more referring to the game rather than the content of this page well good luck to it i personally think yeah i wish them luck i done enough i know just i wish yeah. they had told me what the game is be because nice. i don't know i mean let, let's let's home in on say his specific point what he's hammered on about is this is a passion project for me this is something i've yeah. read about for a long long time why aren't you in the video why aren't you talking to me why aren't you telling me Let tell me, me what it is here in your voice how how Passionate you I mean, to make it. Not People everyone likes it. being on camera. So I get that. But he can still do a voiceover. Yeah, and even if he's he's not comfortable doing that, and I'm saying he because this person is called Dylan. Well, we're, we're making assumptions. Together, we are making it assumptions. It would be nice but... to know, wouldn't it? I mean, again, this is if we could hear them. Yeah. If we could see them. I would, would like be it to be more relatable and I would like to know what the game is. Well, I say good luck to them. Yeah. Um, I wish them all the best. Yes. There's personally and a lot of things I would do differently. Yeah, but... there are a lot of things that need to be changed. And I mean, I'm actually going to keep an eye on this one because I do like a good horror game. If hopefully they update the page further along and say what the game is, then, you know, it might be something worth backing. But right now, there's no way I'd back this because I don't know anything about it. Don't know what you put any money into, do you? No, there's no indication of when they are planning to release it when they're trying you know there's nothing there's not enough information about that 